thank you so much. Um, my name is Matt Miller. I work at the Library of Congress in the US. Um, I'm part of the um, Network Development and Mark Standards Office um, at the library. Uh, I put a link in the chat to this presentation if you want to follow along. Um, and also, there's a link to uh, the uh, code and data uh, GitHub repository. So I'm going to be talking mostly about kind of looking at some identifiers and their links and kind of analyzing the data between these two systems. But just to give some context, um, id.loc.gov is a linked data platform um, that we use at LC for serving authorities and vocabularies and um, other resources. Um, for many years, we've been adding um, SCO's close match links to the external authorities. Um, this mostly happens when um, an organization kind of gives us a mapping that um, has already been mapped and we kind of just uh, add it to our graph um, and, and display it in the data and on the um, content negotiation pages and stuff like that. Um, but starting last year, mid-2019, uh, we started ingesting Wikidata records um, into ID. And so basically, this is a, a pretty straightforward um, process. It basically uses the Wikidata's public Sparkle endpoint. It just asks for all the identifiers that have a P244 um, record uh, property on them. And it just basically brings that into ID, compares it to what's currently there, drops that graph, and then adds the new data in. And so currently, there's about 1.2 million of these LCCM uh, links in Wikidata. Um, so the idea be behind getting these Wikidata IDs into ID was kind of to encourage their use and kind of hopefully increase their visibility into um, you know, the bibliographic metadata world. Um, and I personally feel like you know Wikidata, especially in the Wikimedia ecosystem, is like one of the main avenues for cultural heritage institutions to get their um, resources into the internet. You know, becoming part of the internet. Um, and so this process has been going on for um, over a year now. And there's detailed blog files. Um, you can check out that link. And um, basically, this presentation is very straightforward. We're just going to look at these this this year long process and see what kind of things we can learn from it. Um, some acronyms that I might say are like LC for Library of Congress, LCCN. These are this is a, um, a unique identifier we use at Library of Congress. NAF is the name authority uh, file. So these are like personal names, corporate names, name titles, etc. Um, LCSH is uh, subject headings. So the scope of this is we're looking specifically at id.loc.gov records that are connected to Wikidata. Um, that means that this the results of this kind of um, introspection is mostly useful for folks that use those identifiers. But if you don't, you know, there's still some general kind of benefits that you might glean from this talk. Um, you know, if you're thinking about using knowledge panels, if you're thinking about leveraging uh, Wikidata in your uh, system, um, if and you're just curious about kind of the interplay of these two uh, systems, you, you might get some uh, interesting kind of insights into those areas. Um, and I just want to say all this data was collected via public stuff. You know, this is none of no secret data from uh, ID. It's all using public endpoints, um, and it's in that uh, repo I mentioned earlier. So to get started, um, LC authorities, there's about 11.2 um, million LC NAF and LCSH records, and um, about 11% or 1.2 million are linked uh, to Wikidata. And so the vast majority of these are NAF, um, and they're actually people. And so the most of them are name authorities, and there's like a small sliver of subject headings that are currently being uh, currently mapped. Um, opposed to Wikidata, I saw in Eva's uh, slide, there's 70 something million. I think I checked yesterday and there was 90 million. So it's like this huge growth, right? Even just in this year alone. Um, so, you know, uh, these ID identifiers only linked to about 1.3% of the entire Wikidata uh, uh, data set, which is pretty unfair comparison. And I, I didn't even you know, really know how to color the wiki data circle. So it's every color. Um, and this slide is showing basically the, um, the, the ingest of these wiki data identifiers into ID over the course of a year. On the left, we began with November 2019. And on the right is November 2020. And you can see these big spikes. These are um, automated bots uh, or users using quick statements or bots to load a lot of identifiers into the P244 field, um, which is great. You know, you'll have to see that. Um, but if you zoom into kind of the more day-to-day -day kind of community activity, uh, I was interested to see if there's any patterns. And um, these, you know, really only pattern you see is this peak and valley kind of uh, pattern, which is basically the weekends or the valleys. So people aren't adding as many identifiers on the weekends, more during the week. Uh, and I was just uh, heartened to see, like, you know, there hasn't been a drop off of, of these identifiers being added. 
it's been pretty consistent throughout the, the year, um, and it might be even a little bit increasing at the end. LCSH is different. It's, it's, it's much difficult to connect um, subject headings to Wikidata to items, so it's a lot less activity. So in general, um, these are the, the mean average uh, actions for every cycle, which is two days, um, with the bulk events removed. So just to, not to skew those numbers. And so basically, every two days, there's two, 220 new NAF links added to Wikidata. Um, 18 unlinked, so that's when someone removes something that was probably incorrectly added or connected. Um, so in every you know, five links, people are changing, fixing stuff, and then these label changes. Um, so label changes, uh, besides the queue number, the label of the item, usually in English, is what we pull into ID to be displayed on the um, authority page. Um, and so I really wanted to dig into these label changes and see what's going on um, you know, how, how often these labels change with a kind of specific use case in mind. So there's only 15,000 label changes across the entire 1.2 million identifiers over the course of the year. So it's only 1.2% change of um, labels for all these records. Um, the majority of these events are very benign, kind of typical Wikidata updates. You know, people updating the label to reflect um, best practices, you know, like lower casing things, um, upper casing proper nouns, et cetera. Um, but I was curious about this idea of vandalism because this is kind of very kind of been like a big uh, kind of idea or kind of black cloud about you know using Wikidata information and in, in potentially in your site because you wouldn't want someone to vandalize something and then that information would flow into your site and then you're display, displaying something probably pretty horrible on your own uh, institution site. So I was curious about you know what about these vandalism events. Um, so these are just some, some examples, right, of what a vandalism event would look like. You know, someone changed the label for baby to terrible creature, and then it was changed back. Someone changed Google Maps to snazzy maps, right? Someone, there was apparently a, a very a prolific editor trying to change Thai dollar signs name to Camila Cabero. Um, these are two magici musicians. I have no idea what, you know, the beef is there or something like that, but a fan was maybe changing that. Uh, and then the last one is just kind of an example of um, the first few is not uh, a vandalism event. Like people are just, just you know changing archives to archive depending on what they want it to you know what they think it should be. But then you see on um, you know mid in in August someone just dropped a file name JPEG into it and hit enter. So maybe it was just like a non malicious uh, you know change, but it was still kind of a unwanted change. So these are of course some kind of fun you know <laughs> label vandalisms. You can imagine there's you know things much much worse and um, pretty awful things can, can be changed. So um, I found you know based on these kind of definitions of, of a vandalism event, only about um, 2,500 or about 0.2 percent of all of the identifiers over the course of the year had some sort of vandalism event um, done to it. So um, this is you know a pretty tiny fraction, you know less than a half a percent of the identifiers had this something happen to them. And the majority of them are fixed on the next load, right? So my load is every two days, but you know you could be doing this every um, uh, every day or something like that. Um, so you know if you you were talking to someone who you're, you're discussing you know a use cases maybe using Wikidata, and they're saying you know I'm very concerned about you know having vandalism being displayed on our site, you could say yes, that's a very valid concern. But you know this data shows that you know the chances of a vandalism to something that's a very high profile target like the label is actually very small and it's a very infrequent problem. And you could actually reduce this even more and mitigate it by you know, just delaying you know, your label updates by a week. So you know, if the label hasn't changed back in a week, then update it. So you know, I just want to kind of put this out there and, and to, to show that you know, this is not necessarily a huge problem. So the rest of this, I want to kind of go through each um, kind of data set, stuff that's in Wikidata, stuff that's in LC, and just show like what's being linked, right? And so in Wikidata, there's about um, the majority of things in, in Wikidata that are linked, the 1.2 million, have an instance of human. So 80% of the things linked in Wikidata are humans. There's actually only 8.5 million humans in total in Wikidata. So that means about 11.5% of humans in Wikidata are actually linked to ID, which is pretty cool. The, the unfortunately, this is very tiny to read, and it's, it's very hard to visualize like a long tail, so that's why it looks like this. But after humans, it drops off to the next one is musical group. So you go from basically a million down to 11,000 uh, as the next highest instance of. So this kind of shows you that there's a big prolifer proliferation of instance of, but the majority of them are humans. I was thinking maybe you could kind of use subclasses to get a little bit bigger buckets for these. But just to show this is a huge long tail of, of other stuff that's linked besides humans. 
Um, so if we flip over to LC authorities, what's the same thing going over there? Um, most of them are personal names, makes sense. But then we have corporate names, um, geographic, and then 2% topics. Um, if we go back to Wikidata and we say like, okay, so what, um, what do these links, these 1.2 million links, what do they have Wikipedia articles? And so this is kind of the top 10 list of uh, site links for these items and what they're linked to. Um, interesting to me was that 23% of them have a commons link. So there's there's digital assets out there on Wikimedia Commons for these for these resources. And then I was excited to see only about 15% did not have a link at all. So of course, you know, Wikidata is great, but it's also adding the extra content from uh, Wik Wikipedia that you can do stuff with, which is really exciting. And so there's for every one of these visualizations, there's a link to the data so you can see more information like the long tail um, you know, if you want to see more than the top 10. Um, and then I was also curious, you know, what, uh, you know, we talk about Wikidata as like a hub for identifiers. So for these 1.2 million records linked to ID, what are the other identifiers that are also linked? And so you see, as you would expect, mostly um, aggregator sites like OCLC products, ISNI, um, but you also see some national libraries. And again, there's a very long tail that you can take a look at. Um, of course, next you'd want to say like, okay, so what are the top properties being used in these 1.2 million records? And um, of course, things like instance of are, are high up there, but you can really see, you know, this is kind of like if you're imagining you're going to be, be building a, a knowledge panel, you could use this kind of like a, as like an a la carte kind of menu, right? To be like, well, I think, you know, occupation is there for almost 70% of the time. So that's probably a good field to, to expect to be there. Whereas something like, you know, manner of death is only there 3%. So we probably won't want to put that up there too high. So this kind of shows that, you know, there's a long tail, but there are kind of some properties that are very well um, established for these um, bibliographic you know, uh, based uh, uh, records. Um, I took this a little bit further and I kind of wanted to see if you could say, okay, you know, like, could we develop some sort of like minimal viable property set? See, like, you know, for a certain percentage of these properties, you'll always have them. And it doesn't really work very well. Um, I think it's much better to kind of go from this perspective and, and pick and choose of what would be there. Um, future work, I think for this could be interesting to see like based on the authority type, you know, if it's a geographic authority type, what are the most common properties? I think that would be a useful um, kind of metric too. Um, I wanted to go the other way, right? So we've been talking about can pulling data from Wikidata. But you could go the other way where you're saying, you know, we have all these resources in the Library of Congress catalog. How many of those actually connect to something on Wikidata of these identifiers? And so about six and a half million um, resources in LC's catalog would actually um, connect, to, connect to an item in Wikidata that they're the contributor of, right? So this makes sense if 80% are humans, this is a lot of authors, illustrators, et cetera, stuff like that. Um, but also interesting is that there's about 4.7 million um, resources in LC catalog that connects to an item where the item is a subject of, right? So this would be a very interesting thing. And then, you know, this is not a new concept in the Wikimedia world, you know, like uh, forward to libraries and those projects are interested in like connecting resources and catalogs to resources on Wiki stuff. Um, but it's interesting to see the, the percentages for LC specifically. And the last thing I wanted to do was kind of compare the um, um, the variant labels. And so, you know, another great thing about Wikidata is that there's lots of labels um, in various languages for many for most of the items. And I wanted just to kind of demonstrate the, the the to quantify a little bit and show what's actually available in LC's kind of authority records versus what would be available in Wikidata's um, um, labels. And so in LC, there, it's actually almost half of the authority records of these 1.2 million linked records do not have a uh, variant label for them to find. So that means the majority of these labels only have the one string that represents that entity or that authority record. And then, you know, there's a, there's a it gets smaller as we go. Um, compared to Wikidata, and it was kind of interesting because Wikidata, you know, having no, no alternative labels is very rare. And, um, but you get this very long tail of, of records that have greater than two variants. So things that um, you know, might have uh, you know, up to 20 or you know, 22, 25 more or more variant labels on them. So again, this is kind of showing you know, Wikidata would be an excellent source for these um, acquiring variant labels to be used. And I think that's about all the time I have. Um, 
Again, if you are interested in this data, I, I package everything up in this repo that you can go and um, get started with it. If you want to um, do something different with the code, all the, all the data is there, so you should be able to manipulate it and some example code. And of course, if you want to see more of these detailed stuff. Um, so I just thanks for uh, listening, and I'd like to thank the, the SWIB organizers for organizing everything, and I think that's it. Thanks. Yeah, thank you very much also for sharing uh, the data so we can play around afterwards. Uh, we have time for some questions. So um, I have a look at the chat. Have you connected with graphic top topic subjects um, used for cataloging books to key data? Uh, um, yeah, yeah. So I, that's very difficult, right? Like to connect subject headings to, because at least in LCSH, the subject headings are very complicated, and they they kind of have a very specific. Um, um, drilled down meaning. Um, for, for many of these subject headings that were connected, there are, we actually um, used the, the forward to libraries mapping that they had spent many years. Um, Mark Ockerbloom had been spending many years mapping these Wikidata, Wikipedia articles to um, LCSH. And so we use that. So the majority of those are from, um, they're from that mapping. Uh, but yeah, it's very difficult to, to create those mappings. Okay, so that would be my uh, similar question. Why are so topics so rarely um, connected? We, we uh, tried to do it with Codicong project, um, but um, yeah, I'd like to know your opinion why this, this is more, maybe more difficult than connecting people and um, organizations. Yeah, I, I think, I mean, for people, it's pretty straightforward as far as, um, I mean, it's very difficult, right? Reconciliation is very difficult, but you know, matching string names to and birth dates and this associated metadata around people is very straightforward to kind of connect them to other records. But when you're mapping subject headings that represent a, co a concept against multiple ontologies, that's just, you know, it's an extremely manual process and only really a person could do that. Um, there's no such thing as like automated string matching in those cases. Um, so I think it's just, that's much more of a manual thing. And I just don't think there's been a lot of um, uh, effort manually to, to make those connections.